Okay, here we have a problem that says uh, we're supposed to find the real zeros of this function rounded to two decimal places. Well, because this is such an odd looking function with decimals and things in it, it's going to be really difficult, uh, you know, to try to use some of the methods that we've been um, algebraically looking at. But you know, we have this wonderful, wonderful resource in our calculator. So let's use it. In our y equals, let's put in the function of x cubed uh, plus 3.2 x squared minus 7.25 x minus 6.3 and hopefully if I have put that all in correctly then when we hit zoom 6 we should be able to see our function now this was a degree 3 polynomial which means that we should be looking for no more than three real zeros. Well a real zero is where it would cross the x-axis so we actually do have three of those right there. Now a real nice way to be able to find those on your calculator is let's go back to our y equals and in y2 I'm going to type in zero and then graph. Now what I did by doing that is here's my y1, the function, this curve. y equals 0 is the x-axis. You know your calculator puts an x and a y-axis on there for reference but it doesn't really see it. All the calculator really sees is what you've typed into the y equals. Now it can see that x-axis and because of that we can now um, intersect and find where those things meet. So I'm going to hit second trace and choose number 5 for intersect and now I'm going to move my cursor to the left. You can see it moving um, up higher there as I move to the left and here we go. We're starting to come back down now. So I'm going to get that as close as I can and then I'm going to hit enter, enter, enter. And my first point of intersection, my first um, x-intercept is at negative 4.5 comma 0. Now we can repeat the process and find the second one. So if I hit second trace number 5 for intersect, do you notice over here at the top it's telling me what I'm tracing right now. If I hit the down arrow, I can toggle between all of the things that were, um, you know, graphed out. This is kind of nice because now whenever I move to the left, I can see my cursor much easier. So that's a little trick also. I'm going to get as close as I can and hit enter, enter, enter. So our second point of intersection is the negative 0.7. Zero. Well again that's an x-intercept so we're going to write that down make note of it. Finally we have that third one here so we're going to repeat the process. Second trace number five for intersect. Now I'm, tra I'm tracing the graph along the y1 so I'm going to arrow down so that I'm on the the y equals zero. It's a little bit easier to move over that way and then we're going to hit enter three times. And our last point of intersection is at 2, 0, which again is an x-intercept. So now over here to answer my question, we had an x-intercept at negative 4.5, we found one at negative 0.7, and we found another at 2. So now we have our three x-intercepts which is the maximum number of zeros we could have.